And that's why fan art's important. I swear to God. See, <laughs> I, if I showed that, they'd just cancel our we, ass. We just get kicked <laughs> off of Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's Tuesday night. You know what that means. It's our Stab at a Talk show. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want our cool crap, it's down there. If you want to chat with us in Discord, it's down there. Uh, most importantly, if you want to join us on the talk show or on one of our one shots, uh, M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail, uh, we'll get you hooked up and uh, you can show these guys and me how real D and D players do it because we don't really give a shit. We just like to have fun. Uh, and that is okay. Tonight we're going to be doing uh, three recaps. Uh, we're going to try and whiz bang through them because uh, our main topic is going to be problem children, uh, how to deal with them, how to spot them, how to recognize when you are one of them. <laughs> uh, but first, let's go ahead and introduce you to the cast. First off is Carol. Carol, who are you? And that's it because we aren't playing a game. So who are you? <laughs> well, I'm Carol. I'm a commissioned mini painter. You can find my, find me on Twitter at, at muses underscore touch. Hey, she did probably say. I know it's on the screen, too. Um, I mm -hmm. also am a long time D and D and Pathfinder player and a sometime GM. Wait, you played Pathfinder? Is this the first time? No. You're this? Yeah, that, that's wow. nice to us. Hey, you know what, Carol? Congratulations on <laughs> opening up your horizons. It's, it's really good to try new games and not get stuck in the rut. With yeah, you. thanks for coming to D and D. We appreciate it. Yeah. Next up well, is Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, tell us a little bit about yourself. Kyle just disappeared. And Kyle just Kyle walks up. walked away. Kyle's David, a you're cat. up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm David. I'm usually uh, either here or on the Thursday night show, uh, our Murder Hobo soap opera cacophony. So I'm here and you can, fi you can find me. I'm a DD and d enthusiast. So, I mean, even if you don't join the show, you ought to write us or something. So we'll, we'll, we'll address issues. Better fan like art than this. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> fan art is appreciated so yeah if we have what? fans it's spy it. versus spy that's who it is it's spy versus spy naked there we go naked. Uh, <laughs> next up again last but not least kyle kyle tell us a little bit about yourself hi i'm kyle i'm a commission uh mini painter you can find me at muses uh, underscore touch uh and i also you know i j oh no i'm sorry that that's not me you're reading no, the I'm script Kyle. again um, <laughs> i'm usually here or on thursdays uh doing a DD &D soap opera called no damn it i did it again oh my god kyle what is yeah i am kyle and i am the creator of this thing called odd fish games where i created adventure sense and i'm just an amazing person all around Aren't you? Uh, I feel like that's Biden's, not right either. I think you're Biden's vice president pick, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely, I am going to be the first black woman slash Asian woman as vice president. I slept my way to the top. <laughs> Can't believe I gave a thumbs up to that. Oh, you did. Wow. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I'm not saying she slept her way to the vice presidency, just to the attorney general in California. Wow. wow, somebody's got issues. Okay. <laughs> so that's who you are. <laughs> Truth comes out eventually. Uh, eventually. Uh, as Kyle has alluded to, we appreciate our sponsors. Uh, one being oddfishgames.com, maker of Adventure Sense, and Pirate Dog Dice, uh, maker of Loaded Damn Dice, because these players roll way too freaking high. Uh, thanks to our sponsors. Let's get on to the show. <laughs> we had a series of three games this week. It was another busy week for us. We started off in cacophony in refuge cove david you played uh tell us why it was the single greatest game of the week because it was an 80s reference night so basically the whole episode was an 80s reference it's to a particular movie with a group of kids that find a cavern that leads to uh you know pirate ship so there we go that's our episode <laughs> now uh Pretty much, like I said, it was 80s reference night. Uh, our One of our main characters, Zadar, continued his 80s persona, pick, 
picked a celebrity, went with Billy Idol this week. I Not, think you set the tone. You I set did. The- I did. Frank just hopped on. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So episode starts, little Timmy falls in the well. Basically what happened is a uh, sinkhole opened in cacophony kids playing around the area one fell in you know because of course kids check out things uh we get wakened up kids banging on our door wants us to come rescue timmy out of the well so uh and doing that we find lost tunnels the lost tunnels leads to a a cavern uh where we encounter some booty traps so booby traps traps? sad wow man what (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> come on it's an 80s reference man so, the goonies man i totally goonies. ripped off goonies he did goonies. it was oh, awesome it was awesome so we had we had a, a rare gem hidden in a skeleton's boot uh we had like giant spiders and uh yeah so it was great uh two encounters uh pretty big encounters uh, uh well three actually Giant spiders, uh, skeleton barbarian carrying an axe. Yeah, almost wiped half of us out. That one hurt a lot. Yeah. Uh, Then. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not complaining, actually. We escaped that because, of course, with uh, Carrie's fog cloud. She loves that. And I actually appreciated it this time. kill that thing but you all wanted to run away so rosa was down was a, a lot of hit points you got you got almost four, taken out by one hit so i think it was at four hit points at the end of that uh when we ran away so that yeah. was not a move. dm flag dm definitely flexed his muscle for that one <laughs> so so hammer drop so we ended up running rosa did not want to run but you know we finally pulled her into it. Uh, we take a rest, then we discover another part of the cavern where we actually find the treasure, as Frank put it. It wasn't just loot. So as we were walking our, our, uh, down, uh, running from the skeleton, we found, uh, well, in the process, we found, and I wanted to ask you about this, Frank, explain the casks. Grogan's Firewater, it's highly flammable dwarven ale. Uh, it causes a flashpoint similar to nitroglycerin, but it's good in the belly. Oh, yeah. Grogan's yeah. Firewater, try us today. Craig, you should put that on. You should put that in Discord for, um, for Ernest to, for Ernie to. Uh, see I'm never it. on with Ernie, so I can't ask him. So. No, I totally forgot about it, but I think you should, you should put it on Discord. Ernie has see. a funny story from what I heard about that. So, but anyway. The introduction to Grogan's Firewater. <laughs> so basically what happens after that, we find One-Eyed Willie's <laughs> ship <laughs> and using Goonies references. Yeah, One-Eyed Willie, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this ship was in the cavern. One of the things that we noticed, giant scorch marks on that. Well, as we use stealth, we tried to run reconnaissance to check out the ship. Uh, my familiar ends up getting torched. <laughs> uh, so sneak on the ship. There, There's a chest, and within that chest is a very powerful creature that we all know, and it is a flaming skull. Encounter uh, brewed with that. Um, <sighs> had to make the choice to either try to... <laughs> Try to whittle it down, which we had, we had, we had no way we were going to do that before that thing killed us or closed the chest. So we went with the latter. For anyway. yourself, I'm still in decent shape. So thirty-three uh-huh. percent. But as Frank put it, yep. the ship was the treasure. So for us to escape the caverns to get out of there, there was there. We kept hearing a whistling. Turns out there was a cave in for. Uh, an exit or an entrance uh, within the cavern itself. That's when the two kegs came <laughs> in handy because we ended up blowing a hole on the inside. I almost failed uh, a series of dex checks. <laughs> and thank God the dice were rolling hot. And uh, yeah. So, and that was our show. 
we would say come sail away but we didn't sail away because we had to wait for the tide so well, so sail then, away later <laughs> we did though we did it you did say it did happen we did sail out you do have possession my of ship. the saber yes my god my pirate has a ship in both the games i play her in i was about to say you Pretty got a significant <laughs> windfall <laughs> lately on these shows <laughs> well no well that's that's in a game outside of here oh, oh okay. they sink <laughs> Uh, uh, ne next show is episode 134 Duke Ellington the Margu campaign uh, we'll start with Carol uh, what was your take on it well first of all it wasn't the Margu, wasn't Margu. I'm sorry um, I'm reading ahead <laughs> damn scripts uh, this is the it's shit funny. campaign this is a <laughs> shitty campaign not the Margu campaign this is the one he wants to end <laughs> <That's right. laughs> agreed that kyle was gonna do all the talk because you think i do too much talking so uh, that kyle, was kyle's what? assessment i can always mute you <laughs> <laughs> let's see mute so give us your brief overview on what you thought of episode duke ellington the sedellus campaign wait which one of us Sorry. you first and then kyle it, oh my god it is so much fun that's what i think of it um we started out, the party was once again split. Uh, Lucas, our druid, was resting comfortably at the inn he was at, and we were all standing outside the burned out remains of the inn we were at, uh, where the, what we think is the cult of sen Sensua? Sensua. Sensua. Uh, the cult of Sensua burned it. We, we saw them working about, so we suspect they're the ones who burned us out. Uh, so we were escorted to another uh, inn, but we noticed that they... Kyle, you're muted. He's not talking. <laughs> we found out some very important information, and that is we thought that an entire block had burned down in the attempt to kill us, but the French onion soup guy is still okay making it. That's his right! Yes, the French onion soup guy. So Okay, all you, Carol. Done. No, we got escorted to another inn. Uh, and we we're thinking, and we noticed though they were following us, and we're like, well, we probably shouldn't hang around at this end because it'll probably burn to get burned down, or we'll just get murdered in our sleep. So we went into the inn, I cast invisibility at a higher level, made us all invisible. By this time, Lucas had his four hours of sleep and he or rest, because elf. Uh, and he was making his way towards us and towards the fire, and he was ended up invisible, and we both ended up invisible. He was at the front. I didn't say shoot. I didn't see it. Um, he was at the front of the, this inn, and we were at the back. And, of course, you know, we're all invisible, so we can't find each other. So I have to burn another third level spell to find him when he's right out front. Well, we did eventually get together, and we were about to head off when a couple of uh, men heard us talking because, you know, we're not very stealthy. Or specifically, I'm not very stealthy, apparently, when I don't want to be. And they came down the alleyway, I think, looking for us or looking for whatever. I was assuming Very it's us. savvy people looking for us who weren't guards. That's because were Kyle, Kyle's character has a volume problem! <laughs> Oh, was it? I was call it, it a charisma I problem, but <laughs> just, just I thought it was I thought it was my fault because I it wasn't was a cat. Fault. But uh they, they smelled of the ocean. They were not cult to censor. They, they were, were kind of nautical men or yeah. you mean they were seamen? Some... Is that what you say? Jesus <laughs> They were two <laughs> tall glasses of sea right there. Sailors. They were sailors, okay? So Mariners. Uh, so Better they went street right by us and didn't know where they because everyone then shut the fuck up. Oh, this Kyle. is from the <laughs> so Oh, yeah. Went... Now you mentioned that after the semen load comment. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said semen. Oh, that so, was me. <laughs> we walked down the street. We found two dead guards, which I'm thinking were killed by those two guys. It's the one thing that really makes sense. And a longboat parked by there. Uh, we checked out. We looted the two guards quickly. But and if Frank, you want to know why we didn't check out the longboat more, but we were all a bit freaked out after having been hunted by 
at least two different parties and almost killed in a fire. So we basically went to Lucas's, uh, where Lucas was staying. Yeah, where Lucas was staying. Got our rest, thank God, because I was almost out of spells. Um, and then we we went to go meet, what the hell is her name? Our contact. Hey, hey Lacey. Oh, the no. contact? Yeah. Uh, contact. Uh, Sonora. Sonora. Shake, 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 Sonora. Sonora. That's right. Oh, Sonora. I know. Sonora. So we went to go meet Sonora the next morning, but there was a whole lot of people in the square where we were supposed to meet her. Uh, that's because Lord Bushmill came in with the troops to help save the town because apparently my sister... She's a real <laughs> hero. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's an evil bitch. Uh, my twin sister apparently is commanding the Navy uh, for Fulton, and God knows how that happened, so she was a pirate uh, at one point. Um, so you, they were going to attack the town. They, were, they had already ordered uh, Yaddle to turn over their Navy, their troops, and surrender, um, and Bushmill was coming to save them. So we eventually did find Sonora, and she led us to another opening to the catacombs, which was at this place. What's the name? What's the name of the episode again? Duke <laughs> Ellington's Bard Shop. It was right across from the Mariner's Rest apartment building that you guys stayed in. No, oh, we didn't stay in it. That was wait. The Mar- we I attempted that- to stay in the Drunken right. Mariner. It was the name of it. That's yeah, right. It's the Mariner. It's the one we we basically left invisible from. I believe. Guys, as you're watching, re-record this. So if we get something wrong. We're not going to go back and watch it. We're just going to. No, I already game. know. I mean, I already know that was, yeah, this was Saturday. It's now Tuesday. You think I'm going to remember everything? Um, you, should. you should. I remember, remember a lot of the details. The names usually escape me. So we go to, we, we anyways, we go there. Did you remember the two dead guards? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't listening to you. I mentioned go ahead. the dead guards in the longboat. Um, in the longboat or next to the longboat? The longboat was, well, I assume the longboat was tied to the dock right by the two dead guards. I don't know what he's free and drawing. I think sense. it's supposed to be you and your evil twin, but your evil twin has a penis. <laughs> or you uh, have yeah. a penis. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, yeah, I see where I screwed that one up. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I did not I was notice. Like, wow, this is an identical <laughs> twin sister? Let me well, you haven't seen her sister. take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get through this because you wanted to get to the actual topic. So <laughs> Duke Ellington Bard Shop. Go. Get to Duke Ellington Bard Shop. Uh oh god, this was fun. This was really funny how we got in there. Um I I went sneaking around in the back. Manice was around front being lookout. And Dewey and Lucas both went up top on the roof. And they found a way in. Um, or well, at least they found a way to get one of them in because Lucas made Dewey uh, gaseous and sent him in through what was like a lot of beans. <laughs> mm-hmm. Apparently. But then the real great part was is that Lucas became a cave bear and just dropped through the ceiling. So they got in. He made a large hole, which Meniz was able to let fly up and into. Um, he pointed out there were men. Shit, I don't remember the men. There were men coming up the street. Uh, so I think guards coming up the street. Manly men. Men Manly. of substance. So we, so anyways, a, we found that the place is not uninhabited, even though the Spard store has been closed apparently for a very long time. There's no instruments or anything else. I didn't really search up top because we didn't have time. But um, but they found out there was the cult of Sensual was already there. There were at least three of them. We know there's at least four of them. So whether or not there's a fourth one that's in the tunnel catacombs, we'll have to see. But fight ensued. Uh, we killed. We took out two of them. Uh, I ended up. I was still stuck outside the freaking store, and I put my foot through the door trying to get in. But left me enough room so I could inspire Dewey. That was that was all I had time to do, because then all of a sudden I had a friggin' blade on my neck as the guards found us came in, and yes, Cagney Lacey took one look at us, took one look at me, and was like, oh fine and walked away because they had much more important things to have uh to do because Such as? That- 
Oh, uh, getting the uh, rocks uh, off of those uh, seats in, in the street. <laughs> such as, yeah, the incoming <laughs> from catapults on ships. And in turn, though, Bushmills men or yeah, the guards have, a lot of guards disappeared. I know that. I remember that, too. Um, the Bushmills men were throwing rocks back at the ships. We weren't really paying attention because we had our way in. Uh, but the shell, we are so close to the coast that the building was being shelled basically by rocks. So we're into the hole. So we went into the hole. Oh, well, the I was going to say, who went into the hole? We all did. Dewey, Dewey and, and Winnie the, the Pooh. The fat <laughs> bear. So there is a cult of sense of a member who did survive and ran ahead of us down there, which is also worth chasing them as well as trying not to die from uh, falling, you know, ceiling and rocks. Uh, it was a great episode. It was so much fun. I loved sneaking around and um, coming up with a solution on how to get some rest. Because I have a funny feeling, we stayed at that end, and of course, Frank could confirm this, confirm or deny this, we probably would not have got four hours of sleep. We probably would have been burned out or whatever, although I guess the end survived, so they knew somehow we weren't there. Or maybe they just—I don't know. They—I know they knew. I know they saw us go. So and well, the <laughs> uh, original Sensua left to do the catacombs thing because Lord Bushmill uh, arrived in town and with a bunch of soldiers there. Well, yeah, they didn't want to make too much uh, noise. Right. A lot of the Sensua went underground, so to speak. But that we I were there. Were members of that cult in Duke Ellington's? We knew that. What happens so, next? Find out in two weeks. I know, but what yeah. you can find out in next week is what happened last Sunday. Frank, what happened in the uh, Mighty Margo Jungle? The, 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 the Mighty Margu jungle? campaign. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is the three oh. generational grandpa, uh, sons, and grandsons uh, playing in it, as well as AJ, a uh, friend of the family. Uh, they have finally left the Tabaxi capital, going into the jungle to go ahead and explore the Nagumi ruins uh, and. Uh, let's just say uh, I brought out some old fan favorites of monkey flinging poo and <laughs> asshole NPCs. Uh, the biggest asshole NPC that is leading them to the ruins uh, has really garnered a lot of disfavor among the crew. Uh, but, uh, and this is a hard pill to swallow, uh, he is living up to his end of the bargain. So while he is a giant pain in the ass, they can't kill him yet. <laughs> uh, he ended up finding his own mount, which is a giant Gila monster that can climb trees and use its tongue to snap food out of the other adventurer's hands, which nearly led to its demise. Uh, they are ready for day three after trekking through the jungle in the rain and facing off with lizard men. Uh, one of them decided uh, to check above the tree canopy during a lightning storm <laughs> and wearing metal armor. Mm -hmm. So uh, once he got up there and then figured it out, he had to beat a hasty retreat. Uh, wow. They got their work cut out for him because uh, their guide is uh, three handfuls of a pain in the ass. And that is Margu. <laughs> uh, but uh, that is the recap. All three of these are available in the archive, as well as all of our other shows. Uh, take a look at them. Enjoy them. Uh, give us a little feedback. And again, if you want to be on the show, come on. Uh, we may have a new player next week, uh, but we can always use more. Uh, Kyle, you know what? I'm tired of talking. Why don't you take over? This was your good idea anyway. So, oh, Thank you for the love and the support. I can say all the awful things I want. Scott, but drink. as long oh. as I come up with good ideas, they still let me on the show. Uh, so uh, today, between the roles, we're talking about problem players, and we are not talking necessarily about cheaters, racists, sexists who happens to come to the game. They might have little hints of that, but we're not talking about your very toxic and malicious players. We're talking about players that you can 
hopefully point in the right direction or possibly supply them with what they're looking for in a D and D campaign. Uh, and so with that, I forgot what I was supposed to be talking about. I have a, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't read the uh, manuscript until just now. And so <laughs> We still looked at it. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah, These guys do not love nor appreciate the hard the work, work I put into this does. show <laughs> day in and day out. I looked at it good mornings when you wrote it. Yeah, which is why I gave my explanation of what we should do. I didn't even look at it, and it was like, oh, hey, yeah, no, that's pretty good. Yeah, so uh, today we're going to talk about the most common, I would say, problem players that show up, and then we'll kind of digress and go to the splainers and the other ones that, you know, Carol personally hates and wish she could stab them on an eye with a rusty spoon that she took. Tabaxi? Down. Yes, Tabaxi. That's right. No. Uh, but, Carol, since you are so full of hatred and vitriol for Tabaxi and some of these problem players, why don't you lead off with one of your big... Uh, problem players that you have issues with and then maybe we'll talk about how you correct those or something like that carol all right so so my biggest pet peeve one of my biggest pet peeves are the ones who i guess it sort of fall i rules lawyers and those people who use that ability to be try to be helpful um Carol, I said one of the big topics, the main maxers, the rules lawyers, <laughs> the meta gamers, those guys. Rules lawyers was one of the big topics. Are we picking Man. your big No, no, go ahead. No, no, we're rules lawyer, meta gamers, pretty much the same thing. Stay go Stay on target. Go so, on target. And so and and they're all said, and also I will put under the the ones who, you know, make suggestions because I do have a game where we have this kind of issue where we have a rules lawyer who sits there and basically disseminates what everybody does on the turn and makes suggestions on what they should do. That fucker so, needs to go. <laughs> well, as I mentioned in the email, it is a, it's a teenager, so we cut him some slack. We need to teach him. Heidi's not a teenager. You don't have no, to sugarcoat it. Not. <laughs> it's, it's not Heidi. Heidi. You know, and I Heidi's like got her own problems. Fuck. But yeah, there's nothing like having a four-hour game become five hours long because this this behavior goes on. And that, to me, is one of the biggest things about rules lawyers in general is how much time they waste and how much immersion you ruin if you're one of them. I'm not calling anybody in particular. Obviously, I don't know who's watching. But um, Jim. yeah, and, and we don't we aren't going to call anybody out anyway, yeah. unless it's Heidi. You know, because you know, yeah. nobody likes Heidi is not a She is such kid. a spotlight hug. Uh, that's what Heidi is. <laughs> what does it say? It, you know, sometimes it's good. I never mind. I never mind it when I legitimately screw something up and then someone throws that reminder in. Hey, you really should be rolling this amount of dice. And I go, oh, yeah, for some reason, I just totally missed that. I'm okay with that. But it's when every single time someone's got to make a suggestion how you should play your character. Based because... This, this is the most optimal way to do it because they know the rules so well. No, that doesn't, that doesn't fly with me. And, and Sounds I- Sounds a know. lot like a min-maxer. What's that? Huh? That what? What? <laughs> they know the rules so well that they play it to their advantage. Okay, not she a min-maxer. plays <laughs> Pathfinder. Everybody's right. a rule lawyer. That's <laughs> <So>. true. <laughs> And it's not necessarily to yours. They, I think min maxers have a different mindset than than this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's nothing like a four hour game session that goes five hours because the rules lawyer comes in and said basically picks apart everything that happens in that game. You know, as, as a GM, of course, as a GM, I have GMs. I so said I don't do it often, but I have GMs, and of course, I've played with a number uh, with a lot of people over the years. So. I've come across my fair share of them. Um, as a GM, especially if they're trying to be, you know, play someone else's character, I'll, I'll crack down on that and be like, it is not your character. You may, you know, speak when it's your turn, but otherwise it's not your turn. It's their turn and they get to decide what to do. You could be nice about it. You want to gently correct them, 
if it gets too much, then yeah, I guess give them the boot. But honestly, give them chances because they can be useful too. As I said, yeah. there are times that they not know bad. the rules. They know the rules. <laughs> And if you're like really stuck on something, you don't feel like picking up that book and wasting time. Sometimes it's more efficient to ask a rules lawyer about the rules, you know, about, okay, because you know, like Kyle, we can ask Kyle about any rule and he'll say it. But I That's, say this is how I comprehend from not being that overt rules lawyer is I yeah. shut up and I wait for them to ask, but I stew and I'm like, this is what you fucked up tonight, Carol, you stupid. What? <laughs> what? Heard you. In my in my view too is, is Frank that, needs to read the player's handbook one more time. Investigation whoa. versus perception. Oh my god, you and yet you gotta learn your skill checks, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what? As the DM, go fuck yourself. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> go roll what I want you to roll. <laughs> Why As the person just... with the lowest perception but the highest investigation, <laughs> Frank, you're doing a great job. I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations, Carol. Your DCs have went up. So. <laughs> no, Terrence is just going to come and murder her next time. That's what's going to happen. The trebuchet uh, will find you. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like going to be 20 feet under the ground in a frigging, you know, vault. And that trebuchet is going <laughs> to so that's that's a that's a particular pet peeve of mine. And said, and I will, and I have, and I will crack try to crack down on that because I like to keep the game moving, and I like immersion. I'm definitely a storyteller. Kyle, Kyle pegged me so well because you said I'm a storyteller character, a uh, player, and that's true. Actors that's not the name you called her in the email you sent me, but okay. <laughs> um, Stop causing trouble, Frank. Did I accidentally send you the email I was going to send Carol, Frank? Yes, yes, ah, you did. You didn't it. send it to me after all, you accidentally. Sure. You send that through the mail, Kyle. That's federal offense. I'm just telling you upright. <laughs> That's why I do email or Discord. It's perfect. Or I just say it to her face here. You can. <laughs> so, Carol, the uh, explainer, the rules lawyer slash min maxer who likes to run other people's characters so they can play as good as they do. And the idea is you play your own character and, you know, you have a place. Here's the handbook. Here's the rule book. If we have a question, we ask you. Is that yep. pretty much what I'm getting? Yeah. Don't play other people's characters. Don't do it. That would that drives me nuts. As I, I mentioned this in the email, too, that was one of the, uh, I won't say it because I really like the GM. But I had a player that every time my turn would come around, they not tried me. to take me out to play the character. Not, no, not Frank. This was at a convention, and it literally ended up with me yelling at him at this convention because it was her so husband. bad. That was her husband. No, my husband wasn't even at the <laughs> Her husband no. knew better, but when he told her how to play that character, he knew he wasn't drinking dinner. Uh, what? No, he and he never would. I mean, he's been on the show. You've all seen him. So you know damn right well. DJ's a good spark. He knows sport. where the poison is and that <laughs> he knows where it is, too. No, so, we, uh, sorry, Carol, I'm going to cut you off no, here. I'm all set. I'm all set. Go all right. Uh, David, we're going to go over to you. Uh, have you run into any of these problem players or you, you have one that you want to talk about in general? Are we covering them all or just, I thought we were just, just go the with the big lawyer. major ones. We talked about the okay. rules layer. We'll talk about Min Maxer, the power gamer, um, the spotlight hog, me, obviously, because I interrupt everyone. Well, like to murder you someday. <laughs> There we go. Um, the the one that like okay on the subject of a rules lawyer, they can be handy. Uh, the con that I go to every year, we actually have one. He's the organizer, but we have a, we have a question. We just go to him. Somebody dies, we don't know the rules on how to what to do to bring them back. You know, uh, yeah, he'll he'll gladly tell you. And, uh, you know, I admired a guy for that, you know, but, um, Cody can be a, the shit out of him. <laughs> admired the shit out of him. No, but, uh, he, you know, I mean, you know, as over time, some people really disagree with some of his rulings and stuff like that, but it's, it, 
it's handy to have so a rules lawyer it's just a pain in the ass when you're at the dm and you got one at your table they, but but one of the things i'm going to throw in there and this is not directed at you frank is that it's kind of rules lawyer fucking did <laughs> <laughs> It's the old timers. It's the ones that say, I have been playing oh since God. first edition. Yes. And Scott is going to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> There's one we didn't have on the list, the old timer. No, no, no. I mean, David, I take my hat off to you. You found get one off problem. my stream. <laughs> No, but the point that I'm trying to make, uh, I'm trying to make is, uh, you one, muted him, right? Yeah, just mute, just, throw, <laughs> just throw him right off the screen. There's my <laughs> list. There's the new old timer <laughs> right at the top. No, uh, but this is the problem. There's been so many editions of D and D, and that sometimes somebody who's been playing for a long time, I mean, just that the rules just blend together and. The point that I, I'm being, well, it seems kind Between of. Between the booze and the new <laughs> rules and the new edition. Boy, you guys went there. I, I did not. <laughs> and the winter coat that's been around 30 years, it still fits. So, my God, I'm going to wear it. <laughs> but the thing that, that that's hard is when they become confrontational. So, you know, that's that that's the problem. And it's Why just you like. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are they? And guys, be ready for next between the roles where we talk about problem DMs. <laughs> Turns out old timers is on that list too. But it's not just DMs, it's players too. It's I know players too. Yeah, I, I've been to a convention and a guy's <laughs> arguing with the DM at the table and it's just like, dude, you're on the wrong edition. So. Hey, David, it doesn't even have to be like different editions. It could be like right now where I've got four, I play four game systems. And they and you're she absolutely right. Wanted to confirm. Is that five you're times right. she's mentioned that shit. <laughs> well, what do you want? No, the point we're going to do a new bingo card with how many times you mentioned fucking Pathfinder. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Not mentioned it there though. The Delta well, card. I also <laughs> play Delta Green too. Delta, that's a good game. Um, I haven't tried it, but my husband's run it. But no, I was going to say, it's, no, I can actually attest to the whole systems getting jumbled. I don't really confuse like second, third, like old third and fifth. But I do confuse the, the four I play now because the rules are very similar, but they're different enough. And and I like, is do I do I confirm a crit hit in the system? Or do is it just a twenty? And you know, it's it, it. You're right. It can get really confusing. But that's not really what this episode was about. But I wanted to actually confirm that you're one hundred percent. I'm a pr- fairly Here's, new player, yeah. and sometimes it gets confusing when they when they do that. And you know, uh, after a game, I'll have to go and look something up or something like that. You know, especially when I'm called out on something and I actually did nothing wrong, but, you know, uh, but I've seen uh, at conventions, DM, uh, you know, that problem happened between DM and player and, you know, it, it can get kind of rough, but it's understandable how it happens though. But uh, that's the thing. And that's how I tied it into rules lawyering because they think they're right. And, you know, Hey, David, <laughs> pick a different one, though, other than Rules Lair. I think it was supposed to pick a different thing. I think the old old time was but actually like pretty that. brilliant, I thought. Um, I well, the one that I'll, I'll, I'll discuss is the min-maxer, because who's a min-maxer? This guy. And I do it without even being conscionable of it. It's just, I... um. I really? sit on D and D Beyond, and I create characters all the time. <laughs> and yeah, you're not a min maxer to me now, because I'm not good at it. <laughs> but that's fine. I like it better. I think the real bad min maxers are the ones who try to build characters that can do everything. Right, and it's not no, so much not that I, I usually run with a theme when I'm <laughs> creating a character. But then again, you know, min maxers. I mean, I've seen it on this show, and it just frustrate the shit out of Frank. So you know, I can't, I can't imagine. But but the the point that I'm trying to make, 
it's easy to become a min maxer. You you want a great character. You're really into it. You want this this character. You want to have fun, and your idea of fun is winning. Just able is winning. Big numbers. So, yeah, <laughs> big no, hits. I, think, I mean, I think everybody who plays is a min maxer to a degree. I mean, that's why you have dump stats. You know, all I have minor no dump stats. Dump stats. <laughs> <laughs> But, 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 it, but it said, I try to, you know, I usually try to put my highest st- scores in the stats that I need, the, my prime stats, and I pick one of the other ones. Right, that may be more of a character choice of which one you're going to, where you're going to have your low stats. Well, I but, learned a lot from, from you, Carol. I mean, especially because you're the one that champions this, that, that you know, imperfect characters are oh, actually yeah. the most fun. And no, I- do believe that but even then i still will go and i'll try you know i'll still i'll still go and try to at least put the prime stat, the big number in the prime stat sure That's even right. if the other numbers may not maybe a little wacky but and yeah, i'll say it. with min maxers and i'm sorry to interrupt here you do no. have a scale where it's going too far and one where it's kind of going the right direction. David, you were mentioning, I pick a theme and then I min max it. And that's usually what I would consider the right direction for min maxing, because you have the idea, you want to make the idea become as real as possible in the best way possible that works. The other side of the min maxing is I'm going to build a character that will do enormous damage, will crit all the time, and that's kind of where you end your character design right there. And then it tends to lead to other things like, well, why didn't you pick fireball? That's the only spell you should really know. Shield, mage armor, fireball. Do that's it. all you need. <laughs> that's all you need. And that crosses into the line of the splainer, which is where I was after you earlier, uh, Carol. That's more about character creation. And why sure. didn't you build this character rather than playing it that way that's sure. it's slightly different it's, i mean it's a different mindset i said and i said i'll go one step further i do know like i do know a min max who basically would try to build his character to be super basically he could do everything so we have a person who built a rogue and put points and finding traps and things and this other character who's not a rogue completely different i forget what class you wouldn't think of it as a rogue Bard. And, and, and can out fucking rogue the rogue. You know what? One of the beautiful things I think about D&D and tabletop RPGs in general is the fact that to me, you should not have a complete character. You should not be good at everything. Everybody in the group should specialize in something and you as a group, you are unstoppable. But we're as an we're indiv- going off track here. We're we are going about, off track. We're, 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 we're talking about <laughs> player personalities though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Fair, but that's, but that's see, that is part of the min maxing thing, though. Sure. Because I know min maxers who do that. Yeah. And so with min maxers, I don't know, typically it's a play style thing. And it's, yeah. you address that at session zero or when you're ready to start the new campaign. <laughs> And you say, yeah, what do you guys want to do? Oh, you want to face the Tarask at level two? You fucking min-maxers. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Planet Tarask. Okay. 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 What do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to do at level three? <laughs> <laughs> that brings up a great point of how as a GM you deal with that is you bring in more powerful, you up the CR of everything and you bring in more powerful things. You up the hit points on everything because they can just oh, roll uh, No, I'm actually going to go with Frank on this one because yeah. I know I'm partial to min-maxer. I know we the min maxers have shown their ass on this channel. I'm calling you out, Tamlin. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't and I'm the other one it. who's shown the <laughs> ass. So, yeah, no, we've we've both been there in that fighter sorcerer mix. Although he went with the paladin, uh, uh, I didn't. I went with a different min maxing style. But Frank, you've actually dealt with us both in game with these characters doing crazy amounts of shit. And then we leave the other players in the dust as far as survivability goes. How do you deal with that, Frank? Iron golems resolve almost <laughs> everything. Hit <laughs> <laughs> uh, me, bitch. Net 20. <laughs> and another net 20. <laughs> you know how it deals with it? He one shots characters like Terran, which are not min maxed in the least and not fighters. And uh, then he uh, 
so just so he can kill you. Because that's essentially what happened in that fight. <laughs> it, you know what? I have a perfect answer, but unfortunately <laughs> I cannot give it because something Carol brought up a moment ago is you throw more at them and bigger and stronger and tune in Saturday, folks, for the Hand of Bane when these five giant assholes are playing. Wait. And they are not going to see what they thought they were going to see at all. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to see. So honestly, you know. Oh, well, I, you know, I could, I could guard and take damage here. And I could guard and take, yeah. No. <laughs> and roll a no, wisdom you, save. You <laughs> that part of it. You have no idea what the other three can do. I only told you about that part. Trust me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going after a magical acorn, for God's sake. Oh, God. You guys are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do I deal with min-maxers? You know what? Uh, I, I don't really, because I, I, I figure they at some point in time will slip up, make a mistake and, and they will, you know, run across the iron golem with the magic dice rules. Uh, I, I, tr I try and leave you guys alone with your players. I mean, there are some character races I do not care for at all, but you know what? Those are, those are my players, players, tough shit. Uh, just like you guys rolling with me, except for David who dies Thursday. So tune in for that. Uh, Cause old, old guys know shit. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, th this game is supposed to be fun. So for me, min maxers, if that's your gig. Okay. Uh, we all know head wound. Harry and Larry are my favorites. Uh, and I just, just throw the dice. So that that's how I deal with them. I really don't. Uh, I else killed one of them. So, <laughs> yeah. headroom, headroom, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> headroom, Larry. Larry went off the train. <laughs> that was headroom, Larry, and that wasn't me. That was Carol. Carol did that. Carol oh. killed me. Oh, Carol. okay. Yeah. yeah. Wait, did you wait, did wait. you want my my problem, child? Yeah. Yeah. What is your problem, child? Murder hobos. No, <laughs> murder you hobos. love us. Murder hobos are my problem. The caveat is, the reason we did this show was murder hobos come up with just fantastic off the wall ideas, and they allow me as a DM to grow and try and figure out how to do my craft better. They are my largest pain in the ass, and they also teach me more. So it is a double edged sword. Pretty much with all of these, except the rules lawyer. Fuck those guys. <laughs> there is no room for this. And I'm not talking about the way Kyle does it, because if I don't know shit, I'm going to ask Kyle. I'm talking let's, about. Let's say I'm going to say well, this about rules lawyer, because there's the rules lawyer and the guy who knows the rules. The rules lawyer is a lawyer and everyone fucking hates lawyers because they will use the rules to get their fucking way if they can. Yep. And they're assholes about it. The people who know the rules. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But an old guy could cut off a rules lawyer because, you know, back when I was playing. Whoa, whoa, okay, old timer, old timer. Let's explain fifth edition real fast. There's advantage, disadvantage. Perception lets you find the hooker. Investigation is to realize that's not a coin purse. Nice. <laughs> I think we got in trouble with that uh, similar thing. Uh, but murder hobos, uh, you know what? I love them when they're doing... Just, Here's the thing, and we all know I bitched about the campaign. When we started the campaign, it's gonna be it's gonna be real. It's gonna be you know, real D and D. We're gonna go for a thing. Two three sessions in, yep, let's start shitting in people's mouths. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, okay, but you know when you design murder hobos, like if they're in Riverton or Cacophony or wherever, murder hobos will test every dm and bring out the best and or the worst in them uh for me i like the challenge uh but murder hobos drive me nuts <laughs> because they because they all play as individuals and you cannot do that in a campaign uh when you do that in a campaign it breeds animosity and it'll get your character killed because people do, people don't like that shit if they aren't all on board. Now, if everybody's on board, 
short campaign, not a big deal. <laughs> uh, but if you have five people, hey, we're doing a campaign. One person, I'm going to be a dickhead. Uh, you are going to uh, go on calls without assistance. Um, <laughs> so that, that's my two cents. Murder hobos. Fuck those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then murder hobos, they're a great combination of the the slayers, the instigators, uh, and your solo lone wolf kind of deal where they don't want to sit down and do nothing. So they want to be involved in everything. And usually they just, they're doing D&D for fun. They don't want to act. They want to kill something because if they kill Jim at the office, then the boss is going to come down hard. Maybe the cop, probably the cop, the cops will come after you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. And so maybe. they just want to live out this murder fantasy of, you know, killing people like Carol or David or Frank, but they can't do it in real life. So they have to do it in D and D. Hey, my D and D life is so much <laughs> cooler than my real life. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kyle, you keep hacking on us. Uh, I'm going to give Caitlin a jingle. and Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, no. Not Caitlin, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have any new one shots ready. No. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. No. But it's um, with problem players. Sorry, Carol, for talking over you. With problem uh-huh. players, it's figuring out, you know, why they are doing the way they're doing. Is it just a style of play they're looking for? Um, you know, with min maxers, power gamers, slayers, they want to kill something, they want to win D. Uh, you got your rules lawyers or someone who just wants to spend time on the various details and that. And it's just figuring out, you know, how to balance all of that in a party. And honestly, having a group of these problem players in one party can make you a better DM because you start to pay attention to your sessions and be like, you know what? We haven't killed anything in three sessions. Let's have a big battle coming up. Or, you know, we've had several battles. The actor is starting to withdraw there and they need to say something. So let's add some political intrigue in here. And by knowing what your players are, what they need, you learn to diversify as a DM and solve those problems the players are having. Man, I could really have just ended on that. Let's go ahead and mute everybody. Everybody wave. We're done. I feel like maybe I was even muted the whole time. I'm not. (laughs) We're good. Uh, What about moving on to resolutions? I mean, things that that we can do with these. Yeah, let's go into more about that. Yeah. Dave? Um, Yeah. Time them out. (laughs) You know, if it gets too bad or something like that, you know. I mean, that's all I can think of. I'm, I'm a very in, inexperienced DM. And like I said, my background w- was DMing for kids. And yeah, you want to talk about problem players, <laughs> you know, and a bunch of murder hobos. Try playing with eight to 12 year olds. So. Well, I guess at least they weren't old guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm never going to live that down. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, the difference is the youngins don't know the rules. Right. The old timers <laughs> refuse to learn the new ones. Hey, I got to say ones. this. <laughs> Without the old timers, you wouldn't have Carol's favorite game. So, there Pathfinder? You go. Yes. <laughs> what? This is yeah. this. That was, that was the the schism, that that the, the great schism in D&D, you know. Fourth well, edition yeah, came yeah. out and split the community. So, but anyway, yeah. uh, so. timing out your players like, hey, you know what? It's OK to get up and walk away from the table, especially you, Timmy. Yeah. No, I'm talking when it gets heated at the table. It's just oh, like, yeah. you know what? Let's take a break. That's it. You know, by the time they come back, <laughs> have drinks, whatever, you know, probably you know, kids really, really like that turkey. Dave yeah. looks like he's making a good point. Go ahead and unmute him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, so yeah. So like I said, you know, I mean, if, it, if things get too heated at the table and all that, or somebody's just really pissing you off as a DM, just, just take a break, you know? That's a good point. That's a good point. Or, or, you know, be, be firm with them. Um, but, you know, be, try to be nice about it, but be firm, especially if it's a convention game. Well, 
actually in any circumstance, really, you don't want to make, yeah, yeah, you don't want to start fights at your table. Um, and the other thing I will say this is, it, as a GM, if you notice that, so I, I mentioned the story about the time when the person was trying to play my character. I ended up having to yell you at You did? Her. How many times did you do that? No, wait, 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 let me finish my point. The point being is that's what happens when a GM does not have control of his table or her table. Have control of your table. If you notice this type of behavior, do your best to put a stop to it because it can cause, it can definitely cause a lot more trouble, you know, in the long run. However, when I did yell at the guy, I played in another game and he never bothered me again. So, you know, that did work, but the GM, I think, is it, and I like the guy's friend of mine, but still, I think he should have stepped he up. Was and weak. He should have taken well. He was a pathetic you know, GM. You're the referee of your games, TM. You got a problem, I, players. It's your problem. To, you know, I'm some <laughs> but yeah, and this, and I've seen that behavior, and I do try to stop it. So you know, if anyone is honing in uh, it, it could possibly ruin the fun of someone else at the table or said i as for rules arguments my view as a gm is i do have final say i know frank we, we get on you about your the way you do your checks but you are the gm and ultimately i will go the way you say without too much argument you hear and that the, you hear that david you hear that oh yeah the reckoning's coming Sometimes if I just like, okay, so a performance checks blocked my, my manacles. No, it should have been, I mean, you actually helped me with that role. Because of Steve's tools, I probably never would have made it. Although I did roll high, I think. But, you know, I mean, as I said, I will, I, will, I will abide by it and I'll discuss it later. Frank's got Tombstone playing in his head right now as Wyatt Earp. That's you, right, man. You tell him, I'm coming and hell's coming with The me. greatest actor of our generation, <laughs> Kurt Russell, right there. That's I'm, my I'm man trying crush. To, I'm trying to gain favor. Again. <laughs> That's why I mentioned it. What, uh, you said Tombstone. I figured you knew where I was coming. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So anyway. So, yeah. So we got timing out. So what... It, what are some resolutions hey. for some other things? Hey, actually, you know what? I was going to say, I have one more problem player that, that probably Oh my be. gosh, Carol, you, we're you doing know, the resolution. When, when everybody is a problem player around you, no, you're no, no, no. in the center. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many times has it happened where, where we've had, well, maybe not so much on the show, but I've been to tables where people will, will start texting and start, or, or, Better yet, yeah. and read. We had a player who read the freaking rules book and wasn't paying attention. And they get to his turn, and he would do something that would totally break the rules. He like he couldn't be, he couldn't build What's a character. What Carol is saying is she hates people who have ADHD or ADD. What? No, she says screw our players. players. <laughs> <laughs> like, the illiterate players too, Carol. Come on. <laughs> It's because their personalities are kind of like cats. They're just I'm going to need a second page for all of her hates now. <laughs> no, no hates, okay? Let's get that straight. I just, I'm yeah, pretty sure she said she hates those players, I think right? that's exactly... Well, you know, we can re-roll the tape on that one. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to get calls from ADA and all that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a no. real thing. It's a real illness, Carol. Fine, I'm All right, and we've made it till nine o'clock. Let's go ahead and wave over. No. Final thoughts? Let's do final thoughts. If uh, it goes well, maybe we'll do a second problem, players, and you can talk about your watchers and your ADHD issues. Yeah. So, Frank, let's start with you because I don't want Carol to keep talking. Well, yeah. you know, I, I got to hurry because it's time for my fucking Metamucil and I got to get to bed so that I can wake up at five for my breakfast. <coughs> uh, Bran flakes. That's right. Got to keep everything regular. Uh, you're always going to have problem players. Uh, hopefully you have less problem players than you have normal players. Uh, one thing we didn't get to was address it, but I like to address it away from the table. Uh, you praise in public, 
uh, you punish in private. Uh, talk to them. Maybe they don't understand a concept like I don't understand perception versus investigation, even though I do. I just fuck with these guys unmercifully. He just uh, doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Just roll what I told you to do. Um, but yeah, talk to them uh, because, you know, maybe there's just a misunderstanding. And if it's something that easy, uh, it'll add the enjoyment to uh, the players in the DM. Uh, if they're just an asshole, like I am with my NPCs, uh, stay or walk away. Those are your only two choices. That's my final thought. All right, David, on down to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, he wasn't ready for it. He wasn't. No, no, I he am, has ADHD. Man. You're he a problem Kyle, player, David. He Kyle, that shit. I Kyle that shit. <laughs> yeah, you did. ADHD. I mean, come on, we all know no, that. No, no. Just to reiterate what Frank said, just uh, if you got a problem player, don't call him out at the table. Pull him aside. You know, like he said, praise in public, punish in private. So. Except yeah. for David on Thursday, I'm calling you out, bitch. Yeah. No, I'm really. <laughs> We're going to now. learn what a problem DM does with a problem player. <laughs> Take him out during the game. <laughs> All oh, right. Oh, I loved David. you, Zadar. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carol. Anything last thing to add? Uh, I'll go from the other thing. If you resemble any of these uh, players. Uh, take take some take our advice here and make be be, be a better player. You know, I said even even your everybody has flaws, and uh, that's the other thing. As a GM, try to understand. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got flaws. As a player, try to make yourselves better. If you think you might be the problem, or you if you have any of these behaviors which are being disruptive to the game, please try to. Try to rein it in. That's all we ask. Find the game that suits you. What? If you if you play like a bunch of murder hobos, go find a murder hobo game. Don't us, play the real camp. Play with yeah. us. Play with us. Yeah. Play with us. That's we'll one of the things right we can back. say because it's mature audiences only. Go ahead and play with us. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> oh. Because otherwise, then he'd have to play with himself. Carol, that is way more mature than what we were doing here. What's the matter with you? All right, everybody, that is Murder Hobos Between the Rolls. Uh, come watch us Thursday night, Saturday night. We're the Hand of Bane. Another episode of Margu on Sunday. Everybody, wave to the cameras. On fishgames.com. Yes, on fishgames.com. <laughs>